Hopefully the preseason's over. Regular season's here. We'd like to finish a little bit better than we have, but the thing that was fun is watching the first group go out there and get some work. I thought it was good for them to finish the drive with a touchdown. We got to finish, um, put the finishing touches on this team over the weekend, and then we'll get ourselves ready for Philadelphia. All right, we're ready for the first game of the season, and welcome to Dog Pound Report alongside Nathan Zagura and Matt Wilhelm. I'm Andy yeah. Baskin. A busy week ahead for the Browns. The roster set yesterday sort of fluid. How many more changes do we think we'll see here? I think we could see up to five, but I do think the Browns are going to be active on the waiver wire, and that will come out today around noon. We'll find out who those guys are. So right as soon as we get off the air on Dog Pound Report, stay with us, obviously, CleanBrowns.com, the Browns mobile app. Uh, no doubt. That's something I found myself doing while watching the Ohio State blowout was seeing who was being cut by who and what would potentially fit the Cleveland Browns. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, what happened with the roster yesterday. We'll look ahead in a second. But first, I want to talk back about Thursday night's loss to Chicago. And here's Hugh Jackson immediately following the game. It was good to get the uh, first group some work. Um, got to be a little bit more crisp than what we were, but I thought there was, that was good. Uh, and then to get them out. So, again, um, went, like I just said, we're not blinking. I'm excited about going to Philadelphia next week. Uh, we got to finish, um, put the finishing touches on this team over the weekend, and then we'll get ourselves ready for Philadelphia. All right, let's look back at this game. And the starters got their work in. They did what they needed to do and, and try to get a little bit of a rhythm as we head into the regular season. Well, what stood out to me was defensively they had that one series. They came out, Nassib and Agba with the sack to end that. Carl Nassib also had a pass breakup on a third down. So the young guys looked good. And I thought, Matt, what was really interesting was when that first team defense was out there, they played exclusively with a four-man front. They did. The, we saw the four-man front. We saw a three-man front. We also saw what looked like a 5-2 to me, which we had a, a four-man front. Emmanuel Ogba in a two-point stance coming off the edge, pass rushing, and then Demario Davis and Christian Kirksey inside, or it was Tang Carter and, DeMar and Dominique Alexander. So we're still mixing and matching what we want to do, and I think what that last preseason game really was for Hugh Jackson as well as Ray Horton was let's get this on film in a game setting and see how these players play in these new schemes. All right, RG3 now has four games under his belt in the preseason. This week he gets a chance to take it out to Philadelphia for real. You know, the preseason is a time uh, for the coaches to evaluate and just try to, you know, sometimes put, put players in uncomfortable positions and try to get them to see what they can and can't do and what they respond well to and what they don't respond well to. So uh, that's not my job or any of the players' job to, to assess. But, um, you know, what coach says we all agree with and now we'll be able to focus in on what we do the best and actually go game plan. If you ask me one thing that I loved about preseason, it's that RG3 was named the starter right away. Yes. We didn't have any drama. There was nothing going on. How does the quarterback room shake out to you guys? Well, I think it's obvious RG3 is your starter. Josh McCown's your backup. And Cody Kessler needs this season to continue to develop. I thought the preseason was a little tough on the youngster out of USC. But RG3 threw, threw for over 300 yards in the preseason, three touchdowns, one interception, averaged over eight yards per attempt, and had a quarterback rating of 100. His completion percentage was only 58%, so you probably want to see that come up in the regular season. But overall, I think very successful for him. And for me, I just thought it, it's the work of Pep Hamilton and Hugh Jackson with RG3 that allowed him to have that type of preseason wasn't perfect and I don't think anybody expected it to be perfect and then I thought we also developed a, a need for Josh McCown there's been you know teams interested in potentially trading him maybe the Vikings it was maybe the Cowboys when Romo went down but also the more we got to see of Cody Kessler as you said it's he needs a year to sit back he's just not ready for this NFL game yet so the commodity that we have in Josh McCown is key can you uh, go ahead I was just saying one of the things when you have the 53 man roster there are only 46 people active on game day and Cody Kessler is a guy who is going to be I think inactive for the vast majority of the season as long as RG3 and McCown are healthy I just want to touch on RG3 for a second and just the the whole reshaping of his career and to me it seems like he's taken bold steps because there's a confidence level with him and Hugh Jackson oh there definitely is and I think RG3 is walking the walk as a leader and as and as a part a piece of the puzzle in that building and buying into what Hugh Jackson is, is saying and I really think when you when you listen to RG3 you hear and he almost repeats what Hugh Jackson is probably saying in some of his team team meetings and his messages to him in the quarterback room as well as the team and I think he's he's bought in and you can see that in his play the confidence comes through you know he the way he approaches the you know the press conferences after the football game and just reverberates leadership and that's something that we haven't had at the quarterback position in a long time well, one of the things that when you talk to the players about him that they say is he has swag and he has that confidence and that swagger back in and of himself and I talked to one of his former coaches and the first thing he asked me was 
How's his confidence? Where's sure. he's at? Because I think what happened to him down there in Washington took its toll on him. And I think he's come here, he's been loved up, he's been coached up, and he's having some success. And I think that belief is back for RG3, and that's a good thing for Browns fans. All right, let's go right into wide receivers because it was probably one of the most talked about things that we talked about on this show uh, during training camp. And Josh Gordon now gets to sit for four games. But you look at who's on the team now, and, and they've got some playmakers on this team. They definitely do. And I think, you know, we drafted four wide receivers, and as we sit right Right this moment, all four of them have made the Cleveland Browns. So I think Sashi Brown and Hugh Jackson and this staff are fully dedicated to developing their own. And that's the best sign that we can get right now. But Corey Coleman is a guy that I can't wait to see. We wanted to see a lot of in the preseason, but because of that hamstring injury, we didn't. And I think that the emergence of Terrell Pryor really leads me to be, you know, be very optimistic about this group and the explosion that we have as an offense. Yeah, you look at these guys, and not only did the four rookie receivers make team, all four draft picks made this team, plus two undrafted and freedom. So as of right now, 16 rookies on this team. But you talk about this wide receiver room. Pryor, Hawkins, and Coleman are going to be your starters early in the year. I was surprised that Jordan Payton made it, and I know that Taylor Gabriel, that was one of the toughest decisions that they had to make, and that was one that came right down to the wire. They opted to go with the guy that they drafted in Jordan Payton. But I wouldn't be surprised if there is some movement at receiver today, possibly, and then certainly when Gordon comes back, they'll probably slide one of these guys to the practice All right, squad. The first two games of the preseason, people were questioning what was going on at running back. The last two games, the running backs were able to come through, especially with Isaiah Crowell coming in, coming through with a touchdown. The running game has been going good, uh, and I feel like you know Duke has played uh, played very well when he's been in there. Uh, but we're just ready to get it going, get the regular season going. All right, so you've got two running backs. I think you can feel confident in. Let's talk about the backups a little bit. Well, you've got the behind them, you have Raheem Mostert and Terrell Watson right now. Watson, remember, the big, powerful back who came over from Cincinnati with Hugh Jackson. Kind of a straight-ahead, four yards in a cloud of dust, physical-type guy. Mostert's got some wiggle to him, he and does. I think he's a guy who was explosive, averaged over six yards a carry in the preseason. But these starters, Isaiah Crowell and Duke Johnson, Hugh Jackson said he thinks they can be two of the best players in the league at their position. And I think Crow, I, I love him. We did that interview with him. You got to love this kid. And, and he's excited about the opportunity he has in this offense. And I think he's going to have a big season. He is the red zone back. He will lead this team in carries. He will get into the end zone for this team. I think he's going to have a very solid year. And when you look at Raheem Mostert, it, it's his contribution on special teams as potentially our number one kick returner, as well as his, you know, down the field covered on the, on the kickoff coverage, on a potentially punt return, where he really plays some value. You and, and essentially bought his way onto this football team. All right, we've got plenty more to come on Dog Pound Report. We will continue to dive into the 53-man roster as the show rolls on from downtown Cleveland. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Dog Pound Report. Uh, we're talking about the team and the roster, the way it looks. Also, when we didn't talk about it in the offense in the first segment, but Malcolm Johnson makes his team as a fullback, and, you know, he looks impressive when it comes to blocking and even had a nice play the other night against Chicago. And it's something that Hugh Jackson just likes to have a fullback in the room. He had one in Cincinnati, so no surprise there. They went with Johnson, and now we're going to get a tight ends and three tight ends, so they're going to have some flexibility there. Yeah, and I think Malcolm Johnson, as we saw in that fourth preseason game, Hugh Jackson came out in 22 personnel, two tights, two backs, and Malcolm Johnson is a fullback, and 21 personnel. Now, one tight end and two backs, the other one being Malcolm Johnson. And you want to have that in your repertoire offensively because you don't want to solely have to rely on Duke Johnson and Isaiah Crowell to be the only back back there and having to out-scheme a team, especially down there along the goal line. All right, you talked about it for a second. Tight ends, Gary Barnage is your leader. And then you've got two youngsters, mine and Seth Duvall, who really didn't see a whole a ton of time during the preseason. Got some time in on uh, Thursday night, and Randall Telfair also makes the team. Randall Telfair, the sixth rounder out of USC last year, is the best blocking tight end on this roster and showed the ability to catch in that second preseason game. Had a nice catch down near the goal line. And then Seth Devolve, the fourth rounder out of Princeton. If you were drafted, you are currently on this 53 man yes, roster. Devolve, a guy they like, a move tight end. They think he could be a mismatch guy lining up either in the backfield or flexed out. So they like him. The one surprise, or maybe not a surprise, but Connor Hamlin yes. came on so strong early, people thought maybe he would make the team. Ultimately, he didn't, but I'm told they do want to bring him back for the practice squad. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that, and that's what we talked about Thursday and Friday right after that Chicago Bears football game. But the one thing that, that I wouldn't be surprised by, if Seth the Valve at least 
early in the season is just going to be used very sparingly as as Hugh Jackson and Pep Hamilton put together this offensive game plan for the Philadelphia Eagles. It may not include Zeth the valve other than maybe like one or two specialty plays to try to sneak him in against a nickel sure. corner or maybe in some of their looks they might get a matchup with him on a linebacker. All right let's go to the offensive line now you've got your starting five plus you've got Spencer Durango Sean Coleman and Alvin Bailey. So you've got eight offensive linemen last year they had seven for much of the season this year it's going to be eight that gives you a total of 25 guys on offense. So when it's all said and done, it'll be 25 offense, 25 defense, three specialists to get you to your 53 for right now. But you look at these guys, you've got your starters, and then I think Drango is kind of going to be your jack of all trades at the tackle position. Alvin Bailey, they moved him inside late in the preseason. I think you'll probably have seven active on game day with Sean with Coleman kind of getting time to learn and come up, and he'll be on the 53, but probably not active. Most yeah, days. and I, I like the versatility, and, and you and I hit this right on the head pretty much all the entire last week as we were getting cut down. These were the eight that I thought deserved to play. And I'll be interested to see if, if, you know, if we do, of the guys that we had here in Berea throughout training camp of these preseason games, who we keep on the practice squad as a developmental guy. I'd say maybe Garth Gerhardt, who moved up to the second team center, just to have another true center in the building. Going back to Durango for a second, that Joe Thomas has really taken him under his wing, which I, I, I'm just curious if you were a guy like that, was a rookie, and you've got the all-pro guy coming over and going, come on, Matt, I'm going to show you how to play linebacker in the NFL. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it, it's really fulfilling for you as a young player. And then secondly, for Joe Thomas to take him o under his wing, it doesn't just happen organically. Spencer Durango had to show Joe Thomas that he is ready to come in and be impactful, and so Joe, Joe Thomas is going to help coach him to be ready in some of those jumbo situations or in case we are, in fact, one play away, you know, as a backup, one guy gets hurt we saw that happen last year Greco having to go to center moving guys around it happens in the National Football League and Spencer Drango very well could be the first guy off the bench and one of the things they like about and talking to the coaches about Spencer Drango his command of the playbook multiple positions he has command like not like a rookie but like a veteran a veteran. A veteran. And Spencer Drango was last, last game, in the last game, was on the sideline coaching up the other players on the offensive line that were on that second unit with him. That's why I think they like him, and that's something that a guy like Joe Thomas, who is a student of the game, really respects. All right, Dominique Alexander and then Scooby Wright. We talk about that inside linebacker spot. Yeah, it was no, it was no surprise. I, I believe every time Tank Carter was on the football field in the preseason, he made a play. Absolutely. So he solidified his role as the first guy off the bench behind Demario Davis and Christian Kirksey. It was everything else was up in the air. Most teams will carry only four inside linebackers. So at this point right now, it's a little surprising that Scooby Wright and Dominique Alexander have both made this football team, and that's as we sit right now. Would not be surprised if there is some shuffling around. They like Alexander, who is a priority undrafted free agent by the Cleveland Browns. Scooby Wright, again, a draft pick. All of the draft picks made this football team as we are right now. Yeah, in that inside linebacker room, Dominique Alexander was the one guy that just kind of emerged. And you liked him all the while coming out of Oklahoma, an undrafted free agent. He's good in space, very athletic, made a lot of plays out there. And then Scooby Wright in that final preseason game, you know, he goes out, he gets a sack. He has a huge play at the goal line. Everybody loves him in the building. I think he's here now. I wouldn't be surprised if ultimately he ends up on the practice squad and they go with the four yes. inside backers, as you said. And then that way you can develop him still under the Cleveland Browns umbrella just on the practice squad, not really a viable option on game day. It's just you got to float it out there and hope nobody yes. else picks them up. That's well, it's thing. easier and it's easier to doing it now because teams have shuffled their roster so sometimes you want to slide guys through. Trey Caldwell for example draft pick we'll talk about when we get to the corners. I think the same type of a thing. We don't know if he's even ready to play yet but I think they wanted him here and then it's easier to slide him through later. All right we picked up plenty of new names this year especially guys that were drafted and as these guys have said everyone that was drafted made the team. One guy that made a huge impression during the preseason Joe Schobert. Uh, I think for me specifically, it's a lot of special teams to look forward to. Um, be a core special team guy uh, and get some plays on defense in the rotation. Uh, depends how it all shakes out, but get in there, get after the quarterback, uh, for those kind of situations. And I mean, not really sure how it's all going to play out, but we'll see. I'm excited to see how it goes. Matt, how weird is it when you're a guy that plays college and you're like the go-to guy and you're this and that and then all of a sudden you're like oh I made it to the NFL and I'm a special team sure it's there. a humbling experience for sure but again the paycheck that you're able to secure by running down on kickoff and blocking guys on kickoff return and punt return and so on and so forth is very fulfilling and for a lot of probably the, the bottom maybe 30 to 40 percent of this roster you have to play great on special teams to make an NFL roster and we saw that in Joe Schobert and you could hear that in his verbiage he doesn't know how things are going to shake out but he does know he's going to be ready as probably that third man as an outside linebacker in this group might not play any more than 
than five to seven snaps defensively because we're going to rely on Nate Orchard and Emmanuel Ogba to be those primary outside linebackers. But he's going to be a great player on special teams, and that's why we drafted him and, and, and took him where we did. I remember draft day. We are in the radio studio, and as he was drafted, Chris yes. Tabor walked by and said, got my guy. Got so my guy. He's going to be a big-time special teams player, showed the ability to get to the quarterback, had a sack in that final preseason game as well. You look at this group, Ogba and Orchard are going to be your starters. Schobert's probably third up, and then there's Cam Johnson. And, and he showed a lot, was on special teams as well throughout the preseason. That's a spot, I think, if somebody is out there, yes. maybe a little bit of a veteran that they think can help that room, a I veteran. wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a move. Yes. All right, we'll see you Wednesday night for the special. So 2-0. 2-0 is the coach high school. for the yeah. Westlake teams. Let's Thanks. go. Looking good. All right, <laughs> still more to come on Dog Pound Report. We're going to take a closer <laughs> look at the defense. Plus, we're going to break down special teams. The mad scribbles in the house. We'll talk to Andrew Gribble next. Fight song. Welcome back to Dog Pound Report. We welcome in Andrew Gribble, the mad scribble from ClevelandBrowns.com. Yes. What's going on? You settled in now? You're all ready? I'm ready for the season. I mean, you've had a Locked lot in. of typing. You're like, if you're getting paid by the Prolific. world, you're, he's like a billionaire at this point, right? Regular season's easy after the preseason for me. It's, it, you're locked in, routine, you're ready to go. Aces. You gotta, love, aces. gotta love for Andre. All right, a lot of things to talk about when we when we get into like the rookies that are on this team. And they, again, they all made the team. But Emmanuel Agba talked a little bit about how Carl Nassib played throughout the preseason. Oh uh, yeah, Nassib is a great player. You know, I used to tell him for every game. You know, if he gets a play, I gotta get a play too. You know, just we like to compete with each other. You know, if he makes a play, I gotta make one too. So. I know we're rookies, but we still got to make plays and help this team win. But, yeah, like, Showbridge is also stepping up to making great plays for us. We're glad to have him on our team. So. All right, so dive into the fact that all of these rookies made the team. I think it's, a, it's an impressive feat, I guess, if you're uh, looking at trying to say, hey, we had a good draft class. Yeah, I mean, it's good in that you've got, you feel good about the picks you made. I think each pick is at a different stage of development and will have a different role in this team. And you look at Agba and Nassib, both those guys are going to have some major roles in this defensive line because they've ro risen to the occasion, ri ro rise to the challenge. Carl Nassib had probably the best preseason of any of these rookies. He's going to play right away. You look at Joe Schobert, he's kind of a tweener with special teams, regular defense. And then there's guys like Devolve, Caldwell, Scooby Wright, who may not be out there right away, but would have a future with this organization. I love the fact that Carl NASA. I love how he gets himself fired up. I love the way he plays, like his hair's on fire. Agba, and, and the truth is, those guys are coming out of college. They're really 4-3 defensive ends, and in this defense, we're seeing more four-man fronts. That first team unit was out there. They were both on the field together, and I like that. And I think this defensive line room overall, you've got some run stoppers, and you've got some guys that can get to the quarterback, obviously with Nassib, but I think bringing in Steven Paya, who was one of the most sought-after interior defensive linemen free agents just a year ago, signed a big deal with Washington. Now he is here. I think it's going to be a big help up front, stopping the run and I think he's going to be a great mentor, somebody who can help get the best out of Danny Shelton. Yeah, I think NASA and Agba, they're going to have their ups and downs. I think you've got to be able to have a guy like Paya that you can count on, kind of a reliable veteran. I think that's what they envisioned with Nick Hayden earlier on in camp. Didn't work out. You bring in Paya. He's excited to be here. I think he's got a, an edge to him after getting cut by the Redskins. Uh, a good guy to pick up on the wire. Joe Hayden's back. Let's talk about the corners on this team and, and how they were going to settle in. There are only five of them because we traded Justin Gilbert to the Pittsburgh Steelers yesterday for a 2018 sixth round. We know what happened. Kwan Williams, he's not here. So two guys you thought would be here aren't. So your top three corners, Hayden, Tremont Williams, Jamar Taylor. After that, it is wide open. Tracy Howard, an undrafted free agent from the U, is on this team. And then Charles, um, I'm sorry, they cut Charles Gaines, right. cut Pierre Desir. You go with Trey Caldwell, who we haven't seen at all in the preseason. If there is one spot where I expect activity of one, maybe even two players, it is at the cornerback position today on the wide. Yeah, I think the, the thing you got to look at is you got to get a guy that maybe you feel comfortable that as your fourth cornerback uh, off the waiver wire. And I think there's a lot of guys uh, available in that regard. I think they like the upside of Tracy Howard. Uh, he's one of those guys that earned a spot as an undrafted free agent. I think the coaches really liked it. Hugh Jackson really likes Tracy Howard as well. Uh, it's just interesting. I think it might be a philosophy thing, though, with how many DBs you're really going to be using regularly. I think when you're going to that extra DB, it might be in that safety room where you get Kindred, Poyer, and Campbell on the field at once to join Williams, Taylor, and Joe Hayden. All right, dig into that safety room because Ibrahim Campbell is going to lead the way, but how is how's everything else going to shake out? Well, I think it was a very under-the-radar, very good preseason for Derek Kindred. I think he got better and better. He always seemed to be around the ball. Uh, I think he, he's grasping the playbook a little bit more and he's someone that when you talk to he came in with no no big expectations he's like I'm gonna be a special teams guy and work my way up he has worked his way up maybe faster than expected and has been pushing Jordan Poyer for a starting job
He's the one guy that the coaches and scouts alike have said he is more than we expected, and they are very happy with it. He's showing speed. He's showing the ability to cover. He's showing range. He's going to push Jordan Poyer for playing time at that safety position. I think immediately, I think you'll see him on the field. He'll be active on game days, playing a lot. Raheem Moore, they kept the veteran there at free safety. And then the fifth safety, Don Jones, primarily a special teams guy, a special teams ace. And we talked about him and Tank Carter, core special teams guys. It was Don Jones who kind of forced the chaos that led to that ball hitting the punt returner's foot for the Bears, which Tank Carter recovered and set up that touchdown. Yeah, it's an underrated thing because they, this team lost a lot of core special team guys from last year. Mingo, Craig Robertson, Johnson Badamosi, Marlon Moore, those guys were very valuable and very good coverage units for the Browns last year. They need those guys replaced. All right, probably one of the most poignant moments of the game the other night was watching Chris Tabor uh, undress the punters. Now we have another new punter in here. A, a, a couple of shank punts will do that to you and they'll send you back in. Yeah, Polardi, you know, he came out there, still averaged about 49 yards a kick, had that big 75 yarder, but what do they want in the National Football League? Consistency, reliability. He did shank one. The other guy went for a knuckleball kick when he should have boomed it and Chris Haber was not happy with him. You and I saw that on the <laughs> sideline. That was actually pretty entertaining. So they went and they got a veteran, Cole Quit from Denver. He was kick it, the kick punter in the Super Bowl last year. So this is a guy, basically, ultimately, you lose a veteran in a Andy Lee bringing another veteran, a reliable punter, a good punter, and also get that fourth round pick. I just think it was a great opportunity, and it makes you wonder. I mean, this guy's so proven. You wonder if no matter what happened in Thursday's game, you're going to probably take this opportunity to get Britton Colquitt on this team. And it's someone you can trust, and it's something you can now not have to really think about as much and worry about, just like you did with Andy Lee before. Uh, how much can you minimize the play of special teams during the preseason? I mean, these guys are fighting for their job in a regular position, and I always seem to think that preseason special teams are nothing compared to regular season special teams, especially with guys breaking out of lanes left and right. Well, yeah, and those guys aren't together all the time. They're mixing and matching. You don't know who's actually going to be here. So some of the guys that were on the special teams unit in the preseason, Darius Jennings was playing a lot of special teams. He's not going to be there now in the regular season. Marlon Moore, same thing. So you, you have to see these guys gel in the regular season. But they, they do try to show some things, and, and but they're saving all the good stuff for the regular season, the great returns and the coverage t tactics that they're going to use and the block kicks, et cetera. I will say if you're projecting 53-man rosters at home, always look at the special teams though in the preseason. I think once I saw Dominic Alexander getting involved in a lot of special teams, that's when you know that that guy probably had a future on the team. All right, we've got more of the Dog Pound Report coming your way next. We'll talk Philadelphia. All right, we're almost ready for week number one. In fact, we will get you ready for week number one. Coming up on Wednesday night, we'll be live at First Energy Stadium. And then don't yeah. forget, next Sunday, we're an hour-long pregame show for Browns Countdown. I'm looking forward to that. It'll give us more, a little more time to talk, right? I can't wait. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be in Philly, but it'll be exciting. And they're saying Carson Wentz will start if he is healthy after basically missing the entire preseason. But we'll still have fun with that. Of course we'll we will. We'll figure out a way to get you in the show. <laughs> it'll be glorious. All right, don't forget yoga night. It is Tuesday, September 13th. It's at the Browns Training Facility and the Browns Foundation Radiothon is September 13th and 14th. Put these all down on your calendar throw them into your smartphone. Final thoughts. Just excited to see the 53 guys will take to Philadelphia. It's still fluid and Andrew Gribble. I know you'll have everybody covered at cleanbrowns.com on the latest. Busy, busy Sunday, so expect a lot from that. All right, you feel good? Everybody feels feel good? good? Let's go. We'll see you on Season Wednesday night. Wednesday night, don't forget 7 o'clock right here on News Channel 5. Good night.